three on the West Coast in college hoops and Gonzaga Bulldogs with some beautiful half court offense. A layup for Ben Gregg. That puts Gonzaga back ahead. 14-12. Dave Fleming, Sean Farnham. Final game of the year in the WCC. History on the line. St. Mary's win. First time in their program's history. An undefeated WCC conference season. And a win for Gonzaga would be a third quad one victory in the last couple of weeks. After all season long, that being the question mark. Mahaney, nice ball handling. Got free, but missed a shot. So Aiden Mahaney hasn't scored yet. Nemhard open for three. Got it. Well, great job in transition. Gonzaga wants to get out in transition. And you have to understand as the ball's coming up, who's trailing and what is their strengths as a player. And Ryan Nemhard just stepped right into that one wide open. So a 7 nothing Gonzaga run. Bulldogs up five. Mahaney three. That one no good. Alex Dukas rips the offensive rebound. They left Barrett alone. In and out, no good. Two excellent looks for the Gales. Neither one went down. Now Watson in transition. Barrett got beat to the spot and then a reach in foul. And I think that's on Marshallonis. If it is, that's his second. It is. Now that's a big call. Graham E.K. though picking up Dave. Just lost one game and it was to the St. Mary's Gales. But they picked up a huge quad one victory at Kentucky. They picked up a quad one victory on Thursday night against San Francisco. And they're looking to try to get their third here tonight but this is a team that that the metrics love and we'll talk about it throughout the course of the game the 19th in the net and we're talking still about the next to last four in and uh, no i'm not buying that both free throws good for ben greg that means it's a 9-0 run for gonzaga greg will check out freshman dusty stromer comes in for the first time gonzaga's defense has been good so far they forced some turnovers they were swarming St. Mary's. You got to break that press and then set up your offense. It does speed them up a little bit more in the half court. That's what the press is actually designed to do. If they can create turnovers, that's a bonus. Ball poked away from Marcellonis. That's another turnover. Here comes Nemhard downhill. Ryan Nemhard with the left hand. 11 0 run. They can do this to you. We saw it the other night to start the second half against the Dons. It was at 19 to 3 immediately two timeouts called and it still didn't stop it kept going All right, Gonzaga scored what 30 points in the first eight minutes of the second half against a good team Mitchell Saxon loses it You cannot turn the ball over against the Zags and think that it's going to turn out well for you extra pass Dusty Stromer open for three Timeout St. Mary's what a burst from the Zags. Turnovers lead to transition. Transition leads to your defense. They're on. But the ball movement and the efficiency in which you see, 9 of 17, lose the ball in the middle of the paint and then immediately look to get out in transition. Nemhard attacking the paint. Nothing happening for St. Mary's on offense. Not shooting the ball well and sloppy with the ball. Alex Duke is catch and shoot three. Good. Gales needed that one. That's how the game started for St. Mary's. Alex Duke is three. And they needed that in the worst way right there. EK's on the bench. It'll, Saxon stays on the floor. And Nemhard again on the attack. Another great finish from Nemhard. What they did offensively that time, they moved Huff all the way to the corner because he can shoot the three. That took Mitchell Saxon away from the hoop, and that's what gave that scene for Nemhard to finish. Forbes back in for St. Mary's. Gonzaga basically hasn't been guarding him. Mahaney's got to get it going. Mahaney just kind of flung one up there out of bounds off of Gonzaga. Yeah, Dusty Stormer couldn't corral that one and bring it in, but I think that was an outstanding play by Gonzaga at the other end of the floor. And it's it's why you look at the most efficient offenses in all of college basketball since the start of conference play. Both of these two teams, they're tied amongst the top. And the, the way they've been able to execute you know, it's a lot of fans check in early and then forget about you And I think that's a little bit of what's going on with Gonzaga as far as a national narrative go How, can, how can you forget about him? I thought it hit the rim The shot clock did not reset. St. Mary's came away with the ball. I thought it did catch a piece of the rim 
officials going to talk about So I asked our researchers, I said, for the last five years, which obviously we lose one NCAA tournament, can you give me the seeds for teams that were ranked 19th in the net? Here they are. 2023 A&M was a seven seed. St. Mary's was a five in 2022. USC was a six in 2021. And in 2019, Mississippi State was a five. And yet here we are talking about the Zags being, what, an 11, a 10? I think that's just silly. Uh, I think they would erase any. Whoever still has doubts about this team would be erased if they win this game. Good hustle play by Young Braden Huff, so the jump ball arrow does favor St. Mary's. That was almost another turnover. The passing for the Gales has not been good in this first half. Extremely sloppy. Six turnovers. They've given up seven points off of those six turnovers. One of the staples of St. Mary's is their ability to organize defensively and play the game at their pace. But when you're allowed, when you turn the ball over, nine fast break points out of the 26 already because they're playing out in front of St. Mary's defense where they're not set, they're getting caught in the rotations, quick ball movement, and they found a lot of good looks right now. Inbounds play to Saxon. Trying to go to work against Anton Watson's with EK still on the bench and Saxon gets the bucket. Now let's see if they put Huff in the corner. They are moving Huff in the corner again. That should leave. There's not a shot blocker on the court right now. Nemhard can get back downhill if he can turn this corner. Marcellonis has the two fouls already. He finds Huff. The three is good. The big man. And that's why you do have to respect him out there. And he just cheats in ever so slightly. Mitchell Saxon has to cheat in ever so slightly. That becomes a longer closeout. That's I love the way the Zags are attacking right now with this lineup on the floor. Yeah, that's good offense. Saxon back to Chris Howell who's playing some first half minutes here. Marcellonis down the lane. Nice pass forwards. Leaves no doubt. Well, Mason Forbes does a great job working the baseline. He keeps his shoulders parallel to the end line. Has his hands ready and can explode up above the rim. Em hard against Marcellonis with those two fouls. Now it's Hickman with Huff as the screener. Great pass, and Huff lays it in. A beautiful roll, no tag. That screen was set so high. You're asking Mitchell Saxon by himself to get back, and it's not going to happen. Well, that was a beautiful delivery from Hickman. Marcellonis finds how wide open three. No, long rebound. Instead of shooting it again, he got it over to Dukas. Gales have had some good looks. Another turnover. Bad pass knocked away. Ryan Emard, he was thinking a bucket all the way there. He's having a heck of a first half. The Zags are having a heck of a first half. Now 62% shooting against a St. Mary's defense that gives up about 58 points per game. They've already given up 33. We still have six minutes left to go here in the first half. One of the top handful of field goal defenses in the country, St. Mary's. And a ball tipped, a turnover again. Dusty Stromer is going to take it himself. Misses the shot. And the ball goes out of bounds off of Gonzaga. We'll go back a couple possessions. So watch the attack here by Nemhard. Saxon cheats in. That is a really long closeout. They practice this at shoot around at least three or four times. Then you get the pick and roll. Help side, no tag from the weak side. Nobody's coming over tagging the big, which means blocking his mobility to go straight to the hoop. The Zags operating on high efficiency, high octane right now here in the first 20 minutes of this game. You think anybody's made nine of ten? field goals against St. Mary's all year in any one stretch like the Zags just did. Double team pushes Marcellonis a long way for the basket. But somehow he found Mahaney and that one was a brick. Man, Abe Mahaney way off in the first half. Getting good looks. Emhart into the corner. Ben Gregg three. That one's good. Another St. Mary's timeout. This is a show right now for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They're getting everything. They shot quality. To win on the road, all of Big 12 play. 
Talk about a team that has very limited bench. Took a loss today to Baylor. Well, some concerns about Kansas. Yeah, you, teams that don't show the ability to win on the road usually don't make long runs in the tournament. They got a lot of talent in that starting five. We got to get the ball across the half court here. Almost another turnover. And St. Mary's, I can't remember a game where the Gales have turned it over at this club. St. Mary's trying to find even a decent look. Forbes inside. Forbes good with a foul. Foul will go on Ben Gregg. It'll be Ben Gregg's second personal foul. But Dave, for St. Mary's to win this game, we talk about no Joshua Jefferson. They haven't had him since the Portland game a couple weeks back. But you can't have a game against Gonzaga where Marshall Onis and Mahaney aren't controlling the game completely. Now, Marshall Onis has five assists, but Aiden Mahaney has yet to score in this game. And that just does not set up for a recipe of success for St. Mary's. You also figure without Jefferson, Gales are going to have to hang their hat on defense. And right now they can't stop Ryan Nemhard. Nemhard just exploding to the hoop, getting anything he wants. He's got 13 points to go along with four assists. And he is dominating this game right now. Truly. They're not guarding Forbes. Forbes down low, rejected by Huff. A better job. Here's what I do like about that, though. Forbes is understanding they're not going to defend him at the three-point line. Go initiate the contact. Duke is in. Forbes out. 17-point lead for Gonzaga. And they extended that lead big time without EK on the floor. Now he'll come back in. That's pretty remarkable. Especially considering you go back to that game in Spokane when Huff checked in in the second half of that contest. He struggled, and the Gales went on a run. They did not go on a run tonight. It was Gonzaga that went on a run. Yeah, Huff's gotten a lot better as the year's gone on. Saxon with the left hand. Long uphill climb for St. Mary's. We'll see if they can chip away at the lead and get it a little more manageable by halftime. That's a foul. A easy. A Aiden Haynes, look at the official. I mean, he literally, it was a clothesline. Can't do that, can you? No, that's illegal here. It's a lot of wrestlers. Actually, there's a couple that come to mind. First one would be beating Arizona at Arizona in 1997 before they went on to win the national championship. Of course, the last one would be my my final Pac-10 game at the time was at Stanford when they were number one in the country with Mark Madsen on senior day. And we knocked them off with Jerron Rush hitting a buzzer beater, dogpiling on their logo at center court after the game. And then sprinting to the locker room. Yes, yeah. making sure that time had expired, <laughs> and it did. That was uh, just great memories. I think winning on the road, there's nothing better than it. Especially in a game that's a robbery, and both teams are ranked in the top 25. St. Mary's led this game, by the way, 12 to 10. Can I say I like Dallin Cuff's tie? It's a really good-looking tie he's rocking. Very sharp. Both guys tonight. Not Connor's not so much, but that was nice of you to say. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm always on Kevin's side. We're all on Kevin's side. Marcelona's flipped it up. No good. Saxon, and they're going to call it over the back. Foul on Saxon. Now, this first half has not gone the way of the Gales so far with three minutes left to go. Missed shots, missed opportunities. And now two personal fouls on Mitchell Saxon. Now, those numbers, those have to go up in a massive way for St. Mary's to even have a chance in this one tonight. One turnover for the Zag, seven for St. Mary's. EK, little spin move, got himself open and with the soft touch. Has it gotten to a point for you, it is for me, that when he shoots the ball, my anticipation is it's going in every single time. And he's got a variety, me too, and he's got a variety. It's not just a one-trick offensive game. Mary's so out of sync. It's amazing. Mahaney gets one up and again miss. Saxon offensive rebound. That one wouldn't go. Barrett grabs the ball. 
So the Gale's possession continues. Base was too narrow that time. Remember I talked about it earlier with Mitchell Saxon. When his base is narrow, he does not finish. Another layup that wouldn't go down. Gonzaga on the run. EK got to that position. He's so tough. Once he gets there, forget it. Forget it. What did he say after the game in Spokane? I'll see you guys in Moraga. He did. He's seen him. And so are the Gales. And the Gales probably don't want to see much more of him. He's got 12 here in the first half. Just absolutely controlling the paint at both ends. He got caught on a microphone in the handshake line saying exactly that. There's the three from Mahaney. The three-point shot can be the equalizer in this game. So if you're St. Mary's fan right now, you're looking at the score going, man, we are out of the loop. Gonzaga has shot it well early, but the percentages actually favor as far as the number of threes taken and the number of threes made per game to St. Mary's. Good play by Marcelonis hustling after the ball. It goes out of bounds off of Watson. That was a good hustle play. Listen to this crowd. They, they're desperate. That's just outstanding hustle to deflection. Marshall Otis goes after it. Watson touches it while he's sliding out of bounds. That's why it will go with the Gales, but they, this crowd wants to explode. They want to celebrate. They want to have a party. But in order to do that, they've got to they start making some shots. ESPN women's basketball triple header tomorrow. Final games of the regular season for all these teams. South Carolina looking for history themselves against Tennessee, Notre Dame, Louisville, Duke, Carolina. Great rivalry on the women's side. Starts at noon Eastern tomorrow Sunday on ESPN. Mahaney after the made three. Passed up the look from in the key. Dukas wraparound shot goes. The Zaga wanted a basket interference. Not called. Play on. So a couple of straight baskets for St. Mary's. The lead is 14. Emar finds EK in the lane. Another bucket for Graham EK. And the connection and the understanding of where EK is going to be. When Nemhard has the ball in his hands, he knows exactly where number 13 is. Oh, what big man's playing better in the country right now? I, I don't know. I even the great Zach Eady. I, this guy's dominated. We mentioned it early. Six games over the last six, 23 plus points per game, shooting better than 61 percent. He's got 14 so far here tonight. They'll give the foul. Marshallonis anticipated that and he tried to shoot the ball. That was a smart play by. Augustus Marshall Otis, but they'll call the foul on the floor His dad taught him a few tricks That's still only the fourth team foul Marshall Otis had it poked away loose ball finds Mahaney three air ball Rebound Barrett had it out of bounds off of Luke Barrett right. What a tough first half for Aiden Mahaney Plus six seconds still on the clock. The Zags came in here, Dave, and they did exactly what they wanted to do. They controlled the tempo of the game. They they knew exactly the matchups that they wanted to exploit, and they've been able to get to the trade. 64% shooting. They only turned it over twice. St. Mary's was 11 for 30. They turned it over seven times. And 11 fast break points. 11 to nothing in the fast break category for Gonzaga. And if you allow the Zags to get out in transition, it's really tough to beat them. Now Zags have the ball first to start the second half. And right away, Graham E.K. This time did get cut off by Saxon. They'll get it right back to him. E.K. along the baseline. Elevates and another bucket. They can't slow him down. He's got 16. I mean, we're talking about Ryan Emhart. Well, he's now 7 of 9. Graham E.K. And Mitchell Saxon's got great length. He's hard to score over the top of, but Graham E.K. has that look in his eyes. That's much needed for Marshall Otis. Marshall Otis actually didn't play bad in the first half. He had five assists, only one turnover, but he only took two shots. And he needs to be much more aggressive here at attacking off the bounce. Nemhard again, just making every decision properly. That time, though, missed the shot. 
Well, Marcellonis needs to get it going offensively. Aiden Mahaney definitely needs to get it going. Mahaney just one of seven in the first 20. A lot of, a lot of good looks, too. Duke is wide open for three. That's his third three-pointer he's been able to knock down. Every made shot that he's had tonight has been from beyond the arc. And that time, miscommunication defensively left him wide open. There were not many of those for Gonzaga in the first half. Anton Watson, pretty quiet first half overall for him. Nemhard once again, this time, no. EK offensive rebound, put back short. Well, little energy building here. Mahaney, hesitation move, flips it up and in. And Mark Few, I think he can sense it. He calls a timeout. We've seen a story like this once before, haven't we? Yeah. Before. Can the Gales sustain stops? If they cannot slow down the offense of Gonzaga, it's not going to matter what they do at the offensive end. Here comes Nemhard, Watson, and the Zags. Out of the timeout. EK almost traveled there, starting to make his move. Here's Watson against a very good defender, Forbes. Elevates, missed it. And really, it's amazing to be in a building like this where you can just feel things start to turn. Extra pass, Mahaney three, good! And just like that, it's under 10. And St. Mary's team, I promise you this, they're not gonna, they're not gonna quit. They're not gonna look at the scoreboard and go, oh my gosh, we're, we're down and we got no chance. And they, they whittled leads away before the pass. That was great execution on that last possession, though, to find Nolan Hickman on the baseline. Yeah, Ryan Demhart just continues to carve up one of the best defenses in the country. There's a turnover. The outlet to Hickman. Hickman shot was blocked, but it goes in, and they call a foul. No, I think they were calling it goal okay. there. Just Okay, so it. just count the basket, even though it went in. No foul, but a fast break bucket again. The Zags have killed St. Mary's on the break. Can't allow them to get out in front and play ahead. It's... It, it, Gonzaga in transition versus St. Mary's is not a recipe of success for the for the Gales, and that's another costly turnover by Forbes. Yeah, just a terrible pass, loose ball. Then Greg comes away with it, and he scores. So the answer for Gonzaga: six nothing run, and it's back to fourteen. In the last. Four have come off of turnovers. Duke is three. No. Rebound. Watson. And they're going to call a foul against St. Mary's reaching in. And it's going to be on Forbes. It, you have to value the basketball. And it's really that simple for a team that does not turn the ball over more than 10 times per contest all season long. They're already at that number now. And we've got 16 minutes left to go on the clock. Well, they had this place hopping. First personal foul against Forbes. And the points off turnovers, and that doesn't really tell the whole story. That one does. 15 nothing at yeah. fast break points. St. Mary's brings Jordan Ross in the game for the first time. He did a good job, actually, there of cutting off Nemar. Let's see if he can do it again. Into EK. EK against Saxon. EK sweeps one up. No. The box out by Dukas. Still a long way to go in this game. Forbes gives it up. Mahaney got fouled by Nemhart. So that takes us to a timeout. I love this. I mean, it's so much fun that we end the series.
there, it's easy. It's Graham E.K. They're just dominating. Uh, Kevin Patton, Jr., the freshman of the year for me from San Diego, has put the Toreros as the five seed going into Vegas next week. Anton Watson, clearly the defensive player of the year, should have had the award last year as well. And the coach of the year, Randy Bennett. Mitchell Saxon. Did I get it close, you think? <laughs> we asked Mark Few, okay, player of the year in this league. He said, I would I, I would vote for Marshall Onis. So yeah, he's, he posted back-to-back double-doubles coming into this game. Now, did a good job sharing the ball, but I think they need his production and his scoring tonight. He's not on the floor right now. Nolan Hickman trying to drive in there. EK with the feed from Hickman, challenged, and it went in and out. Greg, follow, foul. Well, so now the Zags starting to get some offensive rebounds. Well, that's because they apply consistent pressure in the paint. Uh, Dave, all eight of their points here in the second half that they have have been in the paint. They're up to 32 in the paint right now. The guy at the free throw line to me has been the difference maker. When he went into the starting lineup, it changed everything. The offensive efficiency for Gonzaga beforehand was in the, the late 20s, early 30s. He comes in, it's historically good. And it's not because of just these numbers that he puts up. He doesn't put up massive numbers. But the efficiency has improved from field goal percentage from three. Their points per game has gone up. And the overall execution and the energy in which Ben Gregg brings has helped the Zags become elite. They're 13 and 1 since he's come in the starting lineup. That's Hill. not an accident. No, not an accident. Not a coincidence. Jordan Ross attacking out of bounds with seven on the shot clock. And he'll come out of the game. But Jordan Ross actually gave St. Mary's a good minute or two there off the bench. Going to be a really good player here. He is. It was a fringe top 100 recruit coming out of high school. They've got another good recruiting class coming in next year. Aiden Mahaney, shot clock winding down, tough shot baseline. Ball still loose, and it's a shot clock violation. Now, will they call it out of bounds prior to and put a second back on the shot clock? It is possible. The Zaga player was touching the ball, but... And they're going to say, shot clock violation, turnover, Zags have the ball. And you see Anton Watson consistently diving on the floor, just making right plays. That's why he's been the best defensive player in the conference. And that time it was Nemhard, excuse me. But the Zags have consistently just made the effort plays tonight. Right, you Nemhard, win. you know, since you bring him up, he started the year, he's playing fine. But he's a guy who's become more and more comfortable in this Gonzaga system. This is his first year here. Yep. Well, I asked him, I, I said, you know, you've been playing great. You look at the assist numbers, and he had a high number of turnovers the other night against San Francisco. A couple of those were offensive, just pushing off. But I said, when did it start to flip for you? And he goes, really right before that USD game where he had a double-double? He said he felt like everything started to settle down. And he said a big part of that has been this action right here with Graham Ike. The chemistry that the two of them have, and of course, the time I talk about the chemistry is the first turnover he's had all night long. Mahaney stepped through, count the basket, and a foul. Well, Mahaney's turned it up. He's playing a lot better here in the second half. A good job. Careless pass that time. And then just comes right back down the other way, able to finish. And Mahaney getting a little fired up, and they're trying to calm him down a little bit. They, they love the passion, but there's been some back and forth out on the floor tonight. And Graham E.K. was talking to Mahaney going to the last time yeah. out. Like, this is what makes this robbery. It, it is passionate. Go back to Omar Samhan. Rob Sacre. I mean, they, they, there's some quotes. If you go back and you look at the history of these two teams, they might respect each other, but they don't like each other all that much. Three-point play for Mahaney. Lead for Gonzaga is 12. Watson, quick move baseline. Still dribbling around to try to find an opening. Cut off by Saxon. Just heaves one up. Air ball. Haney's kind of got that look. 
at the moment. Marcellonis bumps, flips a shot up. They're going to say foul on the floor. And just the first personal for Anton Watson. But you're right. You start to see Mahaney get that little glimmer, and he can heat up in a heartbeat. We saw last year on this floor in this game. One of the great, what, five or six minute stretches we saw all year. Off the inbound, Saxon with the left hand, tough shot. Forbes offensive rebound, put back, no! Ball tipped around, EK comes away with it. And Marys can't afford to miss any more of those. They missed a lot of layups in this game. Nemhard is just applying so much pressure on this St. Mary's defense with his aggressiveness and attack. He is. Ben Gregg goes baseline and scores. What a move. Every time St. Mary's gets the crowd back into it, makes a push, Gonzaga's had an answer. Ben Gregg's got 12 points tonight. Marshall Otis. No good. Saxon there for the rebound. Tipped out of bounds. St. Mary's will keep it. Now ben Gregg, 12 points as you mentioned, four rebounds, but just his toughness, his defense. There's a lot of things that don't necessarily show up in the box score that you can look at and you can say, hey, Ben Gregg's making an immediate impact. Oh, and now yeah. Marshall Lotus getting warned. Another warning. Uh, Mike Reed's gone to Mahaney and Marshall Lotus in the last minute or so. And I, if, if you can read lips or body language, all right, next time, you're not getting away with that. Saxon had it stripped by Greg as he went up to try to score. Now Watson going downhill. Watson, that shot may have been tipped by Saxon hustling back on defense. He's getting chippy. Mahaney, three, no. I think he thought he made it. I think Ben Gregg needs a sub. <laughs> Greg, Greg's out of gas. That's what you want. Play so hard that we have to give you a rest. Well, and the bench gave good minutes. Dusty Stromer in the first half gave solid minutes. Brady Hoff, good minutes. Very good. EK down low. Not a deep team, but what can you provide off the bench to help him? Ah, EK. You don't need a lot of help off the bench when that guy's on the floor. He's got 18 now. And Gonzaga back up by 16. Controlling this game in a very tough place to play. And helped off Saxon, Marcellonis hits the three. They're hanging. They're hanging around here in the second half. But the inability to sustain stops at this end of the floor, you're not coming back and winning the game. Can't be a trade-off every time. Nemhard, no. There was some contact. No complaints from Mark Few. Mahaney, nice wrap around bounce pass, and Saxon, instead of just going up with it, made it a lot tougher on himself. Still got the basket. Well, Randy Bennett, what do you say? One punch, one round. And you know, this is a multi round battle, even within the game. And right now, his team's got to figure out how do you respond? How do you shake off some slow starts? How do you shake off some hot shooting by Ryan Nemhard? And maybe you can't. He's just too good. What a performance. 16 points, nine assists already in this game. And he has done everything and anything that you could ask for. Saxon blocking foul. I call the block on EK. Well, the stars of the game, and we talked about it from the start, Graham E.K., his ability to control, well on his way now. You look at St. Mary's, and we mentioned in the first half, Joshua Jefferson obviously out with the injury on crutches on the sideline. He was huge to start the second half up in Spokane, scoring the first six points, his versatility, his defense. 
They're missing him right now. They really, really are missing him. Out of the double team, Saxon gave it up to Barrett. Who got cut off. St. Mary's ball, but back down 14. Marcellonis gets bumped. And Mahaney on the bench. Probably not for long, but he's getting a rest right now. now here's something to watch, though. There's another foul gets levied against Gonzaga. That's five so far here in the second half. If you're St. Mary's and you want to slow down this game, keep asserting yourself and being aggressive. You pick up two more fouls every time they foul down the stretch, you're going to be looking at the opportunity to get to the free throw line with the clock stop. Ben Greg blocked the shot of Saxon, but then the ball ticked off his hand and went out of bounds. That'll bring Dusty Stromer in. I've got to imagine they're, yeah, they're going to switch defensively because Greg was defending Saxon. Gonna get the ball in bounds. Yeah, Dukas does get it. Saxon from Dukas. Barrett passed up the three. That was a tough, tough shot. He had to get rid of it. And in the end, a shot clock violation. You gotta shoot that three. Have your feet set and let it go. And Mahaney back in the game. That didn't take long. That, that counts as the 12th St. Mary. Look at that turnover difference. 12 for St. Mary's three for the Zags. Not quite a game for Nolan Hickman. Hasn't mattered for Gonzaga so far. They got weapons. You know, if you're talking about maybe they don't have those those lottery picks that we've been accustomed to seeing, but they got a lot of guys that can make a lot of plays. Watson on the attack and the ball never hit the rim, so that's the shot clock violation in the other direction. Yeah, I, I, and the difference might be okay. Maybe you don't have big-time NBA prospects, but right now the way Nemhard and EK are playing, you got dominators at this level. Well, and Hickman the last two games prior to tonight had 20 plus points in each of them. Mahaney, maybe attack flips the ball up. No. Maybe the most impressive thing for Hickman is that he hasn't really forced it. You know, he, he, he hasn't shot the ball well tonight, but it's not like he's forcing the issue. He's allowing the game co to come to him, and it, with his teammates' success, he's saying, go ahead and do your thing, and why not? Yeah, why not? 18 for Nemhard. But just get to your spot, elevate, and finish. Mary's keeps up passing up potential looks for three. I, I don't get that. Uh, that well, Luke Barrett's a much better outside shooter than doing that. Well, and if you're going to back Dusty Stromer in, who is slight of frame, you cannot give it up three feet outside the paint. Just go back him all the way down at that point in time. Nemhard, great look for EK. Another assist for Nemhard. It's a double double. You know, it's just unbelievable. Dump down pass and read by Ryan Nemhard to get another double double. I mentioned the double double he had against USD and how he felt that was the turning point for him. Graham EK, by the way, 20 points. Wow, they went the seventh consecutive game. Away. Did you notice that? I did. Randy Bennett did not agree with that. Uh, that was a continuous motion, wasn't it? Kidding me. How's that, how's that not a bucket? I mean, they called the foul against Gonzaga, but I, we could see that from here. That was 100% a basket. So wave that off. St. Mary's does have the ball, but running out of time. Trying to get it in, and they almost didn't. Mahaney, good for two. A much, much better second half for Aiden Mahaney. Only had three in the first half. He's got ten here in the second. But the guy who really is, I know EK's been awesome again, but the guy with the ball is the guy who's controlled the whole game. Saxon reached around and St. Mary stole it away. I know they don't love to run, but you got to get some quick baskets. Got to play with a little bit faster tempo right now. Yeah. On-ball screen defense has been great. I mean, like, Graham E.K. blew that up 
so that Saxon couldn't even set the screen. The awareness to how they want to defend and how they want to be disruptive has been huge. You, you show all the way out of the screen, just blow it up, and Saxon can't even set a screen. Now, now you got Scott Dribble. Haney had it blocked. It's out of bounds off of Forbes. I, you know, Mark Fuse going to the Hall of Fame. He's one of the all-time great college basketball coaches. I don't think there are many years where he's done a better job than this year. Uh, resiliency was the word he used the other night when we were talking about what, what makes you most proud of this team is he said their resiliency. And this resilient group has has had a chip on their shoulder. Everybody talking, oh, are they in the tournament? Are they not in the tournament? They're in the tournament, folks. They're not only going to be in, they're going to be a team you do not want to see if you're a fan of somebody else in the early rounds. Mahaney again on the attack and swatted again by E.K. That's the fifth Gonzaga block. He's not really known as a shot blocker. Those last two have been emphatic. Yeah. Go back to, you know, I'll see you in Moraga. Yeah. He took that loss personally. <laughs> I mean, that, he took that loss personally, and he has come out here tonight and done exactly what he's been doing for the last seven games. Marshall Onis scores. Well, the St. Mary's have one last push. Every time they've gotten closer, Gonzaga has just blitzed him again. That was a tougher shot for E.K. And now uh, the St. Mary's got to try to get a quick bucket. What a play by Nemhard. Then a tip, a scramble for the loose ball. Watson comes away with it. Ryan Nemhard just saved a layup for Gonzaga. He's been outstanding. Nothing short of outstanding. He didn't come out of the game. That's his rest, what you saw right there. Let it bounce for five seconds. That's his break. Stromer catching two, three. Long rebound out of bounds, and it'll be St. Mary's ball. This great hustle, Ryan Nemhard in transition. Marcelonis tries to thread it. The anticipation like a good quarterback just to get a deflection and a hand on it. Saved a layup. I thought when it left Marcelonis's hand, I thought it was going to be a layup. No question. Now you look at this St. Mary's team, and, you know, there are question marks based on the fact that you know, Wessels is out. Josh Jefferson obviously done for the year. And you could say, well, look, is it more about the concerns, more about the offense or the defense? To me, uh, I'm not concerned about the offense of impact that it has. I mean, Gales have 50 points. It's not like they, they can score points. And against these type of games, it's usually a lower scoring game. But if you allow your opponent to shoot 54% from the field, it doesn't matter what you do at the offensive end. And it might be right now Gonzaga's just that good on offense. But you're right. With no Jefferson, St. Mary's going to have to lean into the defensive side. E.K. will set the screen. Hickman going to go all the way. No. E.K. tip. No. Has it again. Graham E.K. muscles the ball through the hoop. Dominating. Hey, right now, Mark Few can sit there on the sideline and go, all right, here's the deal. If we get the ball to E.K., he's going to score. And if we bring him up and screen, we can get Nemhard attacking downhill. And he's probably going to score. Hey, like, the efficiency in which those two are playing with, Dave, is really unique right now. Their synergy, their understanding of how they have to play, how they have to dominate. And then, oh, yeah, by the way, you throw an animal one on this team. Understanding the offense, taking time. It, it doesn't necessarily click right away. But it certainly has clicked right now for that man right there, Graham Ike. I think you make a good point. At the free throw line, Luke Barrett, no, missed it. You can still value the games in November and December, but also look at how a team has improved throughout the course of the year and how they've matured or the understanding of the, the efficiency in which they play with. You start looking at those numbers, you start thinking this Gonzaga team 
is even better than their 23 and 6 record right now. They're like a top 10 team of the country if you're evaluating them over the last six weeks. EK again. All right, it doesn't all have to come in the paint. That's his second basket outside. <laughs> wow. How do you guard him if he's going to make that shot? Saxon, good look. Barrett has passed up every one of those. Mahaney three. No. Barrett hustling after the ball. It's out of bounds off of Luke Barrett. This was a leave no doubt business trip for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Hey, you know, everybody talked about this week and uh, it's two quad ones. Can they go get it? They have a quad one a win at Kentucky. I watched Kentucky score combined 208 points in two games and today they broke 100 again. Didn't get 100 on Gonzaga. EK. If I were him, I would have just shot the three the way this game has gone. Rebound. Dukas grabs it. Final two plus minutes. Saxon. Foul. St. Mary's has not finished around the rim tonight. You know, you and I were in Spokane. That's the fourth foul on EK. Maybe it was when. The Gales and the Zags met for the first time. And Mark Few kind of jokingly said to us, I'm, I'm turning into Randy Bennett. I'm going to play seven guys. And it's been a great formula. Nolan Hickman and Ryan Nemhard, th those guys have not come out of the game. Neither one of them. When we're done, by the way, Sports Center following our game, there's a must see dunk. I'll leave it at that. Bubble teams from the bunker, LeBron and the NBA highlights, all following us. I think it's Nicole and Michael Eves tonight. Here we go. Waiting. Saxon out. Gonzaga just wants to work clock. Mark Few didn't want the screen. Not yet, at least. There goes Nemhard, just blow by Nemhard. How about the efficiency? I mean, just get to your spot, see a seam, and attack. Extend out and finish. Can't block a shot. Quick release. He's got 20 and 10. Well, I think Marshall Onis deserves the award for the full season. But the two players of the year right now in this conference, Mahaney three is good. Look like Nemhard and Ike. I mean, the guys who look like the best players in this league right now. Grammy K is the best player in this conference yeah. right now. Yeah. Right now. And the last seven games, he plays with. I don't think he can be underestimated what he's brought to the court. And it's it's fed to the other teammates. And then you have Graham E.K. just knowing exactly where he wants to be and how he has to get there in order for him to be successful. And his point guard saying, you know what, big fella, I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you early. We're going to find you often. And we're going to get you the ball. Pressure from St. Mary's and Zags have to burn a timeout. All right, so there's something that the Zags have to work on. <laughs> on the team in blue. And some, we talked about the undefeated regular season. Hasn't happened for a team not named Gonzaga since Pepperdine in 91-92. The Zags had done it six times. Yeah. In that same window, it's really hard to do, and it's really hard for everybody else because it means you got to beat Gonzaga two times. Nemhard breaks the press himself this time, and who knows? Santa Clara, uh, St. Mary's dominated him this year in the regular season, but Santa Clara is a talented team. So is San Francisco. It's not a fait accompli that these two teams will meet again in the championship game, but it seems very likely. Ek. No. Final minute. Barrett three. Ooh. Ooh. Man. Impressive tonight. Impressive road trip. You go on a road trip, it becomes a business trip. A business trip to make sure that you leave a statement that the NCAA selection committee can watch. That everybody that prints up brackets and tells you where teams are going to be seated. The Gonzaga Bulldogs have made a statement here in late February and now early March. 
a loud statement with their performance tonight. Nemhard rebound EK. They'll kick it back out. And that gave him a double double. That's his 10th rebound of the game. <laughs> he wanted that one. He didn't care about the points. EK, Nemhard, Gonzaga. And St. Mary's had, what, a 12 10 lead? And from that point forward, it was all Zags tonight. Ooh. One one's the tally sheet between these two. Will we see a third matchup when we get there? <laughs> Ryan Emmert, he's not done talking to the fans. Uh, well, he can talk because he backed it up tonight. 20 points, 10 assists. Graham E.K., 24 and